Now, tonight, uh, Bokashi is a Japanese pre-composting technique used for soil enhancement. And Shital has been practicing it for over seven years. She's a master gardener since 2014, and she has done the master composting certification from Solana Center. She's a resident of San Diego for over 30 years. And um, she came to gardening through her love of cooking and started growing her own food over 20 years ago in the quest for optimum ingredients. And she's branched into pollinator gardening gardens assist schools and communities install pollinator gardens and monarch way stations so everyone um please i'm going to stop my sharing so that we can have uh she tell start and let's uh let's give her a uh, round of applause <laughs> hi everybody thank you for having me i'm really excited um, to talk about Bokashi. I'm going to share my screen and we can get started. Um, I'll try and do a 45 minute presentation and then we will have a session for question and Q&A. So here we go. Um, Bokashi composting has to do with food waste. So it's nothing to do with garden waste and it helps with soil enhancement. So we're gonna talk about how it enhances soil as well. So it's a two part or actually three parts. So we'll talk about what Bokashi is and then uh, talk about how to do it. And then we'll talk about how to incorporate it in the soil. So what is Bokashi? So Bokashi is a pre-composting method. What that means is when you get what you get, it's going, you'll have to do something to make it into compost. And then the technique is fermentation of food waste. It's a little different than what we're used to in composting world. And you need an airtight container, which is also slightly different than what we're used to with regular composting. And then you do need to use bran inoculated with essential microbes, which is the key in converting the food waste into pre-compost which will lead to really good compost. So why are we talking about Bokashi today? One is because there is a law which was passed last year, which is Senate Bill 1383, uh, which, which um, states that we will now have to compost our kitchen waste on our own and collect it and not put it with the trash. So why did this law get passed? because food waste fills about 24% of our landfills. And landfills are the third largest source of methane in California. So methane is about 84 times more potent than carbon dioxide. And that's why it's really important to make sure that we can take care and reduce the methane emissions to reduce the client to help like you know uh, with the climate crisis so organic landfills emits about 20 percent of the state's methane when i say organic i mean food waste they're calling food waste reducing short-lived climate super pollutants like organic waste so that's what it is but that's why this law was passed so i i really support that it was long time coming and we being gardeners, it's going to be very useful for us. And we'll talk about how. So for us, it's a win-win solution. You abide by the new law and you reduce car your carbon footprint by recycling the food waste at home and get organic soil amendments for your garden without too much hard work. So let me compare the three methods because you might be familiar with the other two, like you know the tumbler composting or the bin composting and the vermicomposting, and then there's Bokashi. So the first one is garden waste. The other one, the worm is kitchen waste. And then Bokashi is kitchen waste. And then the tumbler bin, you have to keep it outside. The worm, you could have it indoor or outside outdoors and the bokashi also you can have indoors and outdoors and that is one of the biggest advantages of it because you can do it in apartments and things as well and then uh, or in small spaces so um uh, tumbler takes about 11 weeks to give you compost um 
vermicompost takes about 12 to 24 weeks, depending on how many worms you have and how much you feed them. And then bokashi is broken down into two parts. So it takes about two weeks to get the pre-compost, two to four weeks, depending on how much bran you put and um, what your compost is, like, you know, what food is in there. We'll talk about it a little more. And then after two weeks, when you open it, you have to put it in the soil to make it into compost. And that takes another two to four weeks, depending on some other factors, which we'll talk about, which is basically temperature and water. So uh, the other two methods require sorting. The good thing or the different thing about Bokashi is there's absolutely no sorting of the food waste. Everything goes. And the other two, I think, are a little more um, labor intensive than Bokashi. It's not very labor intensive at all. I'm not going to do the last line because it's for schools. And so the origin of Bokashi composting has been done for centuries in Japan. So it's true and tried. It's just new to our country. And the process is anaerobic. And uh, the principle is fermentation. These are some of the buckets that we use. This is the bran, which is like a granule thing, which is inoculated with EM1, which is essential microbe. And this is to collect the leche. This is just a sieve, which goes in the middle of the bucket. And that is if you want to collect the leche and have it out of the spigot. You don't need that. We'll talk about that in a minute. So what are the advantages of Bokashi? So one is that it can be kept indoor and it is odorless when sealed. When you open the container, you do get very strong acidic smell. So if you do not like fermentation like acidic smell, then maybe now we are used to wearing a mask, so you could do that. But um, initially the, you don't get that smell, but as it does compost, you will get some, but that's only when you open it. So in the winter time, sometimes because everything is closed, if you feel it's too much, just open a window or something when you open the box, because you're not supposed to open the bucket more than once a day. So it works out pretty fine. I mean, I have it in my house right next to my kitchen and it's fine. It does not attract any bugs, zero, because it's completely airtight. And there is no sorting required, does not act attract rats and such when you add it to soil because it's severely acidic. So um, let's talk about anaerobic versus uh, aerobic versus anaerobic process. So origin is in Japan, principle is fermentation versus traditional is decomposition. So the process for Bokashi is anaerobic. So the volume stays the same while we're used to the traditional compost completely like, you know, becoming small. That's not what happens. The bucket stays pretty much the same. And then what goes in all food scraps and then add-ons. So in this process, you definitely need Bokashi brand with EM1. The, there is an option of lab-grown, but I do not recommend it. I strongly urge you to use something with EM1. And most of the things that are available in market have EM, EM1, and you should just check for that. EM1, when I say EM1, that is the kind of a microbe. The person who developed it got a Nobel Prize. So it's that level of microbe activity that we're talking about. You can always grow something at home. I have the recipe for that. I do that in schools for just teaching kids how to do this, but we don't recommend it using it in the garden because it's pretty unstable and we don't know the results. So, um, and uh, traditional, we need air and water for Bokashi. For the pre-composting, we do not need air and water. Container is airtight for Bokashi and breathable for the traditional. Location is indoor and the temperature has to be about, about 60, 65, 60 degrees Fahrenheit. The, I mean, usually when it's indoors, it's not a problem. It's just that you don't want it in a freezing area. Specifically, I'm mentioning that because um, this is based on microbial activity. So if it's too cold, it's not going to work and produces pre-compost versus compost, uh, it releases nothing in the air. And we'll talk about why that's beneficial because it's completely airtight. So there is no carbon, methane, anything going in the air. And when you do put it in the soil and you bury it and it becomes compost and enhances your soil, the carbon and the methane and everything is sequestered in the soil. So it's doing 
amazing stuff for your soil and it's not releasing any gases like the traditional composting does. And by the way, I do all, all kinds of composting because I, I practice everything and I've been doing the older composting previously as well. And I continue to do that for larger things. So I'm not against one or the other. I'm just saying what this is good for or what benefits it has over the others. Odor and critters are minuscule. The odor... Um, uh, has odor and attracts critters in the first two to three weeks, but not really. I haven't seen evidence of that, but that is what was written on the research-based paper. So I'm stating it, but frankly, I would not worry. And then labor, um, you have you can open it and you'll have to dig a hole and put it in. That is the labor involved, but otherwise there is no labor involved. I'll show you why. So what can you add? Everything. You can add cooked food, processed food, anything, just dump it in. Except for the plate, you can put everything in. So no pots and pans, but yeah. So let's talk about how you get started. So, um, oh, you know what? I forgot to play it. So sorry, people. Okay, here, it's better. So um, kitchen scraps, um, processed foods, meat, fish, dairy, oil, fruits, spicy, citrus, everything, grain, flour, anything like, you know, if you something spoiled, throw it in, no big deal. So airtight container is a must. So buy at least two airtight container buckets. And the re I'm going to move this because I can't see my own presentation. Oh, gosh. Okay, I can't read. Okay, that's fine. Buy at least two airtight buckets, um, two gallons, uh, two to five gallon buckets and up to six buckets for a four person household. And um, you can do that from the hardware store or you can buy a specific Bokashi bucket um, from online or the Solana Center. And you do have to buy Bokashi brand. As far as I know, it's available only online. Please make sure it has EM1. Uh, small one gallon food container for food scrap collection. For, for your kitchen counter. And I'll tell you why, because Bokashi works on fermentation and air tightness. So you don't want to keep it open and throw your scraps as you generate them in your kitchen. You collect them for a day or every two days or whenever your bucket is filled, and then you open that bucket and put it in. So it's not like the regular, like, you know, you're collecting and throwing. It's not sitting on your kitchen counter. It, it, it's a separate bucket. So I have it in a picture, but I'm also going to show it to you here. So this is the one that I have on my kitchen counter. I really like it. In the past, I used to just put it in a, some other plastic container. And that did generate some smell because it's I'm collecting for like a day or two. And the kids were not happy. So my son gave it to me, this one for Christmas, like, three four five years ago and it's just a vacuum thing it's nothing fancy it opens just like this but there is absolutely no smell and it was 20 bucks at that time I checked today and it's like 36 dollars or 29 dollars and online and it works fine so but that is something you would need either that or a carbon uh filtered one so here this is what you need if you're using for edibles and specifically for school gardens. I mean, at home, you could use any gallon buckets from Home Depot, but for school gardens, I use edible grade um, buckets. And then the gamma lid, the second lid has two parts. And that's really important if you're using the bucket combo and it seals really tight. So you can get it online, you can get it at Home Depot, any other um, hardware store. And then the, the, the third, the bottom one is the professional buckets that they sell uh, online. And um, I recommend buying at least one of those just because it has the spigot and it has the little sieve in the middle and you will get the leche. And we'll talk about the use of leche and it is ridiculously good. The leche is so good for Bokashi and you use so little into a gallon. And we'll talk more about how little you use. And when you spray it on plants, like it's just really, really, really useful. So I would recommend buying at least one, which gives you leche. And then depending on your budget, it's not a big, I mean, the bucket and the lids are expensive. I haven't checked today, but it's about $14 for the lids and $7 or so for the five gallon bucket. So 
the differential between the professional is about twenty dollars. So see what you what you want to do. But I have both. I use both because I have six buckets. So I have two of the professional ones, and then the others are the white buckets. So sometimes people, um, if they don't, if they can't carry too much weight, instead of the five gallon bucket, they want two gallon buckets. So for one person in the home. For a two gallon bucket, you would need two for sure, but you would need two to four just because if your buckets are full and it's not been two weeks, then you want to, you don't want to open it and you want to keep collecting it. And then uh, five gallon buckets for two to four person home, you need um, two to six buckets and the gamma lids and the seals for it and the Bokashi brand to sprinkle. This, the middle portion is the kitchen bucket that I just showed you and um yeah and the other stuff is for school gardens so we don't need to go over that and uh, bokashi brand so what is bokashi brand so bokashi brand basically is new or recycled rice or wheat brand inoculated with essential microbes molasses and water to help with fermentation so traditionally in japan where bokashi was started the rice bran was used because that they grow rice. For us, I use wheat bran because I get wheat bran from the brewery. Like the brewer is my friend now because I get it from him. And so it's free because they are just throwing it away or giving it to the agricultural people because it's a waste for them. And it smells really good if you like beer. So, <laughs> but, and it comes moist and it comes really, they use really good water. So I don't have to worry about the water. I actually have to remove the water when I get that. And then you could also buy weed brand, which I have. Uh, I did a master gardener workshop and gave away weed brand. So I made about 100 pounds of weed brand at home. So I bought like the one from the uh, cattle feed, like horse feed. And it was only $12 for a humongous bag. And then I got some from the brewer as well. The brewer one comes really, really wet. So you have to squeeze out the water. But if you use just, you can buy it from the grocery store too, if you just want to try a little bag and that's fine. But if you do that, then when you use the water, make sure the water has to be, um, uh, we'll talk about that when we come to the recipe. But anyways, so yeah, so um, it is best to buy it for home. Uh, I See, if you're just like one or two people in the house, then frankly, I would just buy it. I was making it when I'm doing workshops and trying to give it for free or something. But otherwise, I frankly just buy it because it's so much easier to buy it. Otherwise, it's a process. We'll go over the process. It's fun to experiment with it, but it, it's a longer process. And it it does smell when you try it, when you do the process. So like, you know, it, it, it does create a lot of odor when you're making it. So where to buy the Bokashi brand can be bar, brand can be bought online or at the Solana Center and other uses. You know, I'm gonna try to move this. I don't know. Okay, it's not working for me. The other uses of Bokashi brand are it works really well as kitty litter deodor deodorizer, and it is a soil enhancer. So you could sprinkle it, and you are basically putting essential microbes in your soil. And it's a compost accelerator as well. It's used in compost accelerating. I'll talk about that in the soil enhancement and the other uses. So we'll talk more in detail about like, you know, if you don't have time today, you can just throw it into your compost and how to do it effectively. So, uh, so how to use the Bokashi bucket? So it's a really simple process. You know what? I'm going to just go back to that other thing because then you guys can see it better because or maybe I'll move this here let me do that and then I will do the play and see if that works better uh yeah so when you're using the bokashi buckets it's a really simple technique basically you sprinkle you layer you press and you sprinkle again so sprinkle layer sprinkle press so, oh this is not gonna work okay hold on a minute Stop share. Give me, I'm just going to do this because is that okay for you guys? Yeah. Okay. So it's a simple layering technique. Uh, place the bucket away from direct sunlight and then you start layering. So 
before you start layering, before you start a new bucket, please put at least one or two tablespoons of bran at the bottom. And then when you layer your kitchen waste, you're trying to put about one or maximum two inches. So if you have more, uh, you'll just have to do two layers. I have a household of four and I, and I eat only vegetables and everything, but I still have not had like, you know, the bucket is pretty large. So you dump one day's worth and you'll be fine. You don't have to do two layers, but so you layer. So brand scraps, press brand scraps, press. And that is the process. It's really simple and sprinkle a tablespoon of bran at the bottom and add scraps about one to two inches of thickness and sprinkle bran again. The bucket is generally full depending on like, you know, how much waste you generate, but probably in a week or 15 days because you're pressing. And then, you know, if you don't have time, because I've done this for so many years and I used to be very worried about pressing and waste so much time pressing it, but what I do now is like, you know, every two, three days or something like, you know, like you do a little bit of press and I don't even use the spatula anymore because then you have to wash the spatula. I just take like either like a piece of bread or whatever I have, like, you know, orange or like banana peel or whatever that is like easy and it won't like ruin my hands. And I just use that to press it. But people also keep lids inside sometimes, like, you know, an old lid or a plastic container. You can just put it on top and then press it and then remove it and put all your stuff and press it. So whatever works. And then leave it inside is what I'm saying. But if it's a flat thing, you can just leave it inside and you don't have to wash the spatula. So um, if you have meat or if you have bones, you can put it in. But please make sure that you put like an extra... Uh, one tablespoon or like, you know, you cover it well with the bran and that way it decomposes and ferments a little bit faster. It needs a little bit more to break down. That's why. So the compression is just to remove the air pockets, just like, you know, when you do fermentation in a jar, you're trying to remove air pockets, same principle. So when bucket is full now, now let, let's say we've done that for like a week or two and our bucket is full. So try to keep the most minimum space you can on top of the bucket. And the reason being, again, we don't want too much air in this bucket. And so once the bucket is full, you spread the bran again. And you know what? I mean, if you have a lot of meat in the in there, then please sprinkle where it's really well sprinkled, like two to three tablespoons on the top. But if it's mostly vegetables or such, then even if it's just sprinkled lightly, it's fine. Like, you know, it's not like you have to not see any food scraps at all is what I'm saying. And then uh, you close it. And once you close it, you keep it closed, the full bucket for two weeks at least. Do not open it. This is the whole idea. So that's it. So when the bucket is full, sprinkle it. And then if you want, like, you know, keep a pen next to your buckets and then just write a date on it. So you know when to open it in two to three weeks. For me, I never have time. So I keep the buckets. And if you keep it even for six months, nobody cares. The bucket doesn't care. And things just keep happening inside and nothing bad happens. When you open it, I have like kept one because I was not, I just didn't get around to dumping it. And I didn't have the heart to dump it in my compost bin. So I just had to put it in the soil. So uh, um, when I opened it, it had shrunk. Like it had shrunk like... 12 inches or so, which is extremely unusual. But that's because I didn't take it out for like ever. And the poor thing was just like dying inside. But I got so much leche that time. But either way. So, uh, so label the and date the buckets. But really, you can just open it and see what the result is. And then you just don't want to be opening it every five days or whatever. So that's why the label. But eventually you get tired of it and you will open later than needed. So that's fine. So open after two to four weeks. If it seems fermented, then it is ready to add to the soil and um, your Bokashi pre-compost is ready. So how do you know that it's ready? So I'm going to show you pictures from my buckets. Um, and these are the photos that I have here, which is basically pretty simple. And you can understand what it says. It's very easy to see what is going on here. Oh, sorry. It's not. Give me a second. Um, okay. So, so this is what the full bucket looks like before I closed it. So it's almost full to the top. 
and it's pressed and then before it's closed. So before I'm going to close it, a full bucket and see how I've sprinkled the bran. This is mostly vegetables because I'm a vegetarian, but you, it doesn't have to be like where you don't see anything is what I'm trying to tell you. You can just sprinkle it and then you close it. So after four to six weeks, in, in two weeks, you will see the same white fungus and that is ready. It's a good sign to see white fungus. But see, I opened it after four to six weeks. And as I confess to you, I don't write dates anymore. So uh, see, you see there's a reduction over here. That's because it's four to six weeks. If you put open it in two weeks, you'll still see some white fungus, maybe not this much, but some. And that's good enough. It's ready to put into the soil if you want to start enhancing your soil, you know? So what I do is I have two to three buckets and then I put them in a cart and then I take my shovel, I dig a hole and I put it in the ground. So we'll talk more about exactly how you go about this process because it, that part is very important. So adding bokashi to soil. Now your pre-compost is ready. That part is easy. You can do it in your sleep. That's like just putting stuff in your trash and sprinkling something on it and press, sprinkle, press. That's it. But this part is a little more technical and I'd like you to pay attention and understand it. So adding bokashi to soil. After two to four weeks in the airtight bucket, bokashi pre-compost is ready. You can add it to soil as soil amendment. You can add it directly in raised beds. I do it all the time. Amazing vegetables I get. And then add it to compost. You can add it to the compost bean. We'll talk about that. And then you can make it, you can use it to make seed starter soil or just like starter soils. And I've done that too, very useful. Or topsoil. So soil acidity is increased only in the first two weeks. When you put the compost, do not plant anything like, you know, the same day or in two, three weeks or so, at least in two weeks, because the soil will have a very high pH at that time. And if you plant in the next two days, they will burn. But um, a pH balance after two to four weeks the soil takes over, life takes over, and it really is completely like nothing happened. Even sometimes you will see some scrapes, scraps of food in there. And even then the soil, I've, I've measured everything. So you can test it before if you see some soil scraps, like, you know, if you're doing it in two weeks, you will see scraps of food in there. And if you do have to plan for whatever reason, then check your soil and check the acidity before you put it in. Check the pH, which is easy to do, you know, with that little machine thingy. It's not difficult. So anyway, so adding soil, adding bokashi to soil. So there's a couple things you can do. One is you can take an area which is completely empty and fallow and then dig a hole and put it in that area. And then nothing bad happens because there's nothing to kill over there. And that is the easy way i mean but i don't know if people have room because we are gardeners and we try to fill every little patch in our garden with flowers and plants and all so if that's your case then um uh one of the things is if you do have room and you're going to start instead of just starting in any any place in in the area we recommend that uh, or it's recommended that you start in one of the corners and that way you know that i had put it here like you know in this corner first and then the next and the next. So you you have a pattern and you know where you've done it first. So then you're enhancing your soil in the entire patch and not sure where you put it before. So that's one way of doing it. If you have mounds or any kind of high and low areas, then it's recommended that you put it on top of the mound, like you dig the hole on the top and not at the bottom areas, because when you put it in the top, all the microorganisms and the essential organisms will seep into the bottom. But if you're putting it in the bot, it's it, the gravity doesn't work in your favor. So that, and then um, what I do is also, it does need water once it's in the soil to decompose faster. You don't have to put extra water, but uh, if you want things to go faster, then you should water it. So, what I do is I do, I'm not going to put extra water on my compost and waste my water. So what I do is I put it where there's sprinklers or such or any kind of drip line or something. So it works really well, you know. So I don't put any extra water. Like I don't water it like on a daily basis. It just happens. So the other thing is now you'd say, okay, I don't have space and I just want to fertilize my plants and put compost like 
like, you know, this is a composting lesson. So how do I just use it as a compost? So you put it between plants and that's easy to do, very beneficial. The only thing is you do need to take a few precautions, which are really important. So you don't put it right near the roots. So you go to the tree line and then just to be safe, keep about a foot distance after the tree line and then dig the hole and then you put your compost in it. So that way the acidity is not spreading. So this is the pre-compost, the extremely acidic pre-compost and that is still okay. And I've done it and I'll show you pictures to prove that I've done it and it'll be fine. So between plants, make sure that you go on the tree line, keep a foot and then dig your hole. And let's go to the next one. Okay, adding it in raised beds and between planting. So this is my raised bed. And as you can see, uh, it will enhance your soil with new microbes and neutralize the pH in two to four weeks, like I said. Dig a trench, and I like to put it directly here because it's really like, you know, the bed is already tilled and like, you know, it's softer soil. It's very easy to do. And over here, I don't dig a very deep trench because I have raised beds. So it's kind of shallow because nothing's going to go inside and eat it. Like I have it covered as well, the cages. And so then I just put one inch of soil and it's done. The drip line is already there. So it's fine. And as you can see, I've harvested um, yams here. So I did this line and then the next one will be over there. And the kale is still there. And I'm not, I wasn't going to remove that kale that year because it was doing fine. So I'm just trying to, and oh yeah, so I have a little worm tube in my raised beds. And so I don't, I, I'm sure you guys are Hort Society, so you're familiar with your worm tubes, but if you're not, then worm tube is a warmer composting thing that I, I take a tube, a PVC tube and just make holes in it. And it has like a ring at the bottom and top. So, and the top is closed. I just put all my worm food right in there. I put red wiggler worms in there and they're just traveling in my bed and doing their thing and I don't have to put extra worm compost. So I put a couple of tubes in my beds and that's how it works. So when you have that, please make sure that you treat the worm tube as a plant and put your compost, I mean, you put your bokashi a foot away from the worm tubes because worms, as you know, don't like acid. So if you put it really close, it's releasing a lot of acid. Most likely they'll just move away on a side where there is no acid. But to be safe, keep it away from your worm tube if you have any. So drip lines will have a decompose. So that all is done and we are good. Uh, adding bokashi to barren land. So to improve organic matter in the land, dig a hole, empty the bucket, cover with six inches of soil. And then for the first application, even in raised beds or here, please add water to it. And that way, because you add water, the microbes and the activity starts happening and everything is good. And specifically, if it's not in raised beds and it is in direct land, it is extremely important. I cannot emphasize it more. Please cover it with six inches. And I mean six inches of soil. And if you have dogs, make a digger, deeper trench and then put six inches and absolutely essential to add water. Otherwise, they will dig. And I will I will give you my email at the end of this. And I want people to let me know if they had an issue with dogs digging or any other critters digging. And I've been teaching this for a long time and people have not had issues. And when they have had issues and they've emailed me, I usually go back and ask them the three questions. How, how deep was your trench? Did you put six inches and did you water after? And mostly they have not done the six inches of the water. And that's why you have a problem. But if you put six inches of soil on top and water it thoroughly, it keeps the critters away because this is an extremely, and I mean, rats, you will never have that problem. It's only with dogs and bones. But if you just put like a little bit of soil on top and you don't water, or you just put a little bit of soil and water, it doesn't help. You have to do the thing where... Correctly. So that's that's the only important thing here, but otherwise it's not that difficult to do. And I do have a dog and I don't dig very deep because I just don't have the upper body strength. So I dig a shallow uh, trench, but then I cover it with a lot of dirt and then that works pretty well. 
so this works really well near your roses and all the plants that need acidic like blueberries or something if you don't if you have them in the ground but uh, as you see i have a bunch of roses here so uh i i put them right there because i wanted to plant more roses and i wanted to enhance my soil so i put three these are five gallon buckets three of them and a bokashi bucket which is pretty much five gallon and I emptied, I just dug the soil there. And it's this is a slope. I don't know if you can tell or not, but it's a slope. So I put it on top and then I covered it up. And then now I have new roses growing in there and they do really well. Even when the roses are growing, I make it a point to at least have one bucket in that area. And you think one bucket needs a huge hole like a big bucket? It doesn't. It doesn't. It takes like, you don't have to dig a very deep hole. You just spread it out and it's fine. Like, you know, and then just cover it up and your roses will bloom so beautifully. I'm telling you, you will thank me. So uh, it, it's really, really fun to watch. And then uh, adding Bokashi to compost bin. So when you add Bokashi to compost bin, it, it's perfectly fine because it has the essential uh, microbes and it'll... Um, make your compost um, turn faster like you know make it into compost faster or decompose faster so but you need to it, it is better if you put it in the center and then you cover it with soil usually I don't recommend putting soil in your compost bin at all in this case if you put soil it really helps the microbes to start their activity much faster and it'll and then you do not turn your compost for two to four days and let it sit and the microbes will start doing their thing. And that, and the other thing is also that these microbes, depending on where your um, compost level is, like, you know, if it's right in the beginning, it's going to be so hot that, you know, these microbes are not used to that. So give it some time to adjust and then it'll find its own levels and life will take its course and your compost will get done faster. Personally, I've read about it and I understand the concept, so I know it works and I've read enough blogs to know it works, but um, I haven't tried it because uh, when you do this, it's you'll get compost fast and it's much easier. If you don't have time and you want compost fast, go put it specifically in winters and especially on the East Coast, people do it all the time. But to me, when I do that, the whole purpose of Bokashi, which is you don't like, you know, you don't put carbon in the air and put it in the soil. And I do want my carbon to go in my soil. It, it really is useful to keep your soil better and roots stronger. So I haven't done it, but one of these days I'll cave in and try, but I haven't as yet. So, but it works. So the heat and oxygen stop the microbes from multiplying. Um, it, this is only when it's in the first couple's phases the thermophilic bacteria will cook away nutrients so if you have space to add it to the soil please take that option first but if you need your compost faster then do what works for you so do not add bokashi to worm bin i won't even read this whole third paragraph just don't add it to your worm bin it's a severely acidic thing it would just be asinine to put it in the worm bin i bet when i was reading this they had this, so I put it because I'm a master gardener. I give you all information. But I mean, you know, if you have a tiny little brain, you would understand you worms will get killed by acid. This is pure acid. So don't add it to your worm bin. You will kill everything. So yeah, it's not something you add to your worm bin. You add it to your compost bin, but not to your worm bin. So troubleshooting. So I showed you the white mold and I'm very fortunate that I've never had green or blue mold, but there are enough people who have tried Bokashi and sometimes they do get green or blue mold. And that means that something was not right, which means basically air had entered, entered in the food and the food was rotting and not fermenting. That is it. This, nothing terrible happened. You just rotted the thing instead of fermenting. It's okay. You're not planning to eat it anyway. So nothing's like, you know, nothing's lost. So what you can, I mean, nothing is lost really because you can still add it to the soil. And it's still fine. It's just rotten stuff. So when you add it to the soil, make sure that you dig the trench a little bit deeper because now it's rotten food and it's probably going to have your dog get very happy if there are bones in there. But after that, once you add it, add a lot of bran or at least add like three, four tablespoons per bucket 
on top and that will make the essential microbes once you cover it up like really have fun and break down everything so it, it's you're doing the same thing it's just that and if you really are concerned please email me and i will i will do facetime with you and make you feel very happy and calm and then we can still do what we need to do so yep uh, making seed starter soil or topsoil with bokashi. So in a bucket, and this is just a regular bucket. It doesn't have to be sealed. In a bucket, add one third soil at the bottom. So you please put soil at the bottom. It's important. And then add one third bokashi in the middle and then press and cover with one third more soil. Cover the bucket for four weeks and you do not have to seal it. You should have high quality soil in about four weeks. I've tried this, very useful. And then um, uh, for um, topsoil or if you want like, you know, seed starter soil, I just sieve it with like really um, fine sieve and then it works really well. And yeah, there is, you do not need to add anything. You do not need too much liquid. Oh yeah, if there is too much liquid in your bokashi, like, you know, if you're doing it from the white bucket instead of the leche where you can take it out. Uh, from the spigot if you don't have a spigot in your bucket then um, make sure it's not too liquidy because it'll just take a little bit longer but otherwise um, it's a very easy uh, ratio of bokashi to soil would be a bokashi one part and then two parts of soil which you can see it's like you know the soil twice and one third bokashi so that um um, Bokashi Leche Tea. I love this product. I absolutely love it. Just like I love worm tea. I love this. So the process will not always produce leche specifically in the beginning. So if you are buying the bucket, which with the spigot and like, you know, the second or third day or first week, you try to take it out, you'll probably get like first, second, third day, you're going to get nothing unless you've put a lot of liquid in your bucket, which I usually don't do. But um. Uh, because it takes some time for the for the for whatever you put in to ferment and create the liquid, and then maybe in a week or so you'll get some liquid, and you'll probably get a teaspoon or two. But that, like you know, if you get a quarter cup, you can add a quarter cup is the recipe, quarter cup to a gallon. So there you have your fertilizer. So all my house plants, anything that looks sad, everybody gets it. Orchids. Okay, so I had who did I have? Did she tell me this? I don't remember. Oh my God, I hope I don't misquote her, but I'm pretty sure she did. So uh, she uses it on orchids as well. So now if people are using it on orchid, this is a good thing because orchid people are really particular. So, and I use it on roses and rose people use it too. So roses and orchid people are very particular and they use it so you can use it. So um, please don't pour it directly. It's pure acid. You will kill anything you pour on. So we do have something in our garden that we want to kill. What is that? It's weeds. Yes. So this is perfect. So if you have, like, you know, if you really hate your weeds and too much coming up, just take it and pour it on your weeds. But here is the caveat. Please understand. This is live microbes, which are acidic. So on the first pour, first day, it's really acidic and really good. It's a natural product gradually over two, three days, like, you know, you want to kill your weeds today, but then you had something important, doctor's appointment, son called, kids did something, I don't know what. You leave it on the counter, it's fine, leave it on the counter, but then after three or four days, you go pour it on your weed, guess what? This is not acidic anymore. This is super good compost leche tea, and you just gave your weeds nutrients, so they will flourish. So be careful if you want to kill your weeds, take it out, pour it directly. Otherwise, in four days or two days or three days, pour the extra water, dilute it, put it on your plants and they will grow well. So if your weeds start growing well with Bokashi, call me and I will just remind you this and then maybe I'll ask you if I can quote your name and it'll be fun. So I haven't had anybody do that or at least tell me they did that, but it's kind of fun to see if somebody does that. But <laughs> So anyways, and then, uh, so the ratio of leche to water is one to a hundred. I don't know how to calculate that. It's just in the research thingies, but um, basically it's one quarter cup of leche to one gallon of water, which makes more sense to me because I'm not very mathematically inclined. Uh, but it's like, you know, for this, I would put half a cup if it's a two gall gallon thing. Or one. <laughs> and then I use this a lot for actual spraying the entire garden. I 
use the first one a lot and I really like it because I attach it to the hose. I fill this whole thing with leche sometimes because I don't remove the leche every couple of weeks or so. I just wait for like two, three weeks or four weeks and then I just drain it and I'll get so much. And like, how how do you expect me to like do one fourth, one fourth cup? That's too much. So anyway, so I just fill this whole thing up and spray the whole garden and everybody's happy and I get done. So that, and then it's a replacement for Drano. So I never have extra leche where I'm throwing it down the drain. But if you do have extra leche and you have a, a, a clogged sink or something, it's pure acid. It works instead of Drano. So you can use it. Nothing bad will happen. Uh, Bokashi brand uh, recipes. So I have made this once and that's why it's usually... You can just make 12 pounds or four pounds, sorry. Like you can just buy the brand from a grocery store if you want to try this. It's not very difficult because the ingredients are just wheat bran, uh, EM1 and blackstrap molasses, which I highly recommend that you use organic. And then the water should be dechlorinated. And so you can do that uh, by um, letting it sit for 24 hours. And now it's winter, so you can just collect rainwater and that would be fine too. Uh, it's preferable to not use uh, non-filtered water. So just, yeah. Um, yeah, rainwater works fine. That's what I'd used when I make stuff too. So yeah, EM1 is this bottle. I The other reason why I recommend that you just buy it because I have bought this bottle of EM1 and that's like $40. So in $40, like, you know, the, the, the brand is five uh, pounds is uh, 17... Okay, that's my 30 minute or so warning. So uh, the brand is um, five pounds for $17. So that'll last you for at least um, in a two or four people family, uh, five pounds. It'll last you for at least two months or three months. So then, you know, you just buy that for $17 four or five times a year. And you're good. Why are you doing like buying this and doing the whole process? This is $40 and then you to store it and then you to buy molasses. And I mean, if you want to do it for fun or you want to do a class or you want to give it to friends for Christmas, then have fun with it. And yeah, so but this is the one that's available and I've used it and I'm and I, I did look this up. I looked up the company. I looked up who designed the EM one and that's the guy who got the Nobel Prize. So I would highly recommend that product. And it's not because I'm commercially inclined or anything. It's just as master gardeners, we can't recommend commercial products, but this is based more on research of who created the product. Okay. So um, um, you guys, uh, should I go over the details of the measurements? Because it's going to be online for you. So you can just look it up. It's one cup weed brand. One, one, four, uh, one and a quarter cup EM1, one and a quarter cup molasses and uh, three ounces of dry bran. So basically the presentation is over, but I'm still going to go over the process of this. Um, wash your hands thoroughly for the process. The reason why I say this, it's not just like you're in the kitchen and wash your hands thingy. We're talking about microbes and we're talking about like, you know, things that you can't see. So it's really, really important that your hands are free of all chemicals, all germs, all antibacterial and all that kind of stuff. So please wash them really well before you start this process. And uh, you just basically need to mix the molasses and uh, dissolve the molasses with the wa water that you have. And if it's harder to dissolve, you warm the water a little bit. Add EM1 once the water is cool. It's really important that the water is at room temperature. So because, you know, you're EM1 is essential microbes. You put it in hot water, they die. So right there, everything is over. Anything you make is not going to work. So um, usually I'll just mix the molasses like with slightly warm water and leave it for a little bit and then add the liquid. So then you add the weed bran to it, mix it in a clean container. And um, basically you use your hands to mix it. So you know that all the bran is touching all the EM1, like, you know, the liquid stuff. And the reason why I say this using hands instead of a spatula or something is because, you know, the recommendation is two to three tablespoons or one to two tablespoons if you're just doing vegetables. So if, if you have a clump that had no EM, then 
you know, it's not going to work that well. That's why it's really important to use your hands. And then the crumble does not need, it shouldn't be too liquidy where it like a sponge, like a sponge that you wet and you dry and how it becomes would be perfect. They have other examples of like, you, it shouldn't touch your hands and all. If I've done this, so I know if you're doing it, it shouldn't touch your hands. I mean, it shouldn't stay on your hands and then it's perfect. So once it's done, when you when you make that mixture with water, molasses and bran and EM1 liquid and the dry stuff, then you just put it into an airtight bucket or Ziploc bags for two weeks. And please put a date on this. This one, you're making the bran. It's important that it stays for two weeks. And so you put it and you put a date on it. And then once it's fermented, so it's fermenting for two weeks. So that's how you're inoculating the bran with the essential microbes. After the two weeks, you open the bag and you dry it, completely dry it. And then you put it in an airtight thing or even like, you know, a Ziploc bag or something. And that's what's sold in the market. And then you can start using it on your Bokashi thing and you don't have to buy it. So it works. I've done it. And it is actually better than what I bought in the market. We used to get some really good products. And recently, the products that I've seen in the market are not very good. So I think I'm going to start making it again. But we'll see. So, yeah. But that's about it. This is homemade uh, EM solution. The lac lactobacillus is the name of the microbe thing that you can make. But this is only for students. I do this for science. I don't recommend using this in the garden. This is, I do something else with digital microscopes with school kids and they can see the microbes in there. It's a lot of fun. Even if you have like, you know, just rice sitting in water for a night and next morning you put a drop, you'll see some activity in that water. So it's, it's that fast that microbial activity happens. So it's kind of fun for kids and showing them what I'm trying to tell them why Bokashi works, but it's not something you want to do. Please don't do it. So Bokashi resources. These are great resources. This is an article on, and these are all links. I'm not clicking because you don't want to go there. Uh, why the article, uh, why the Senate bill was passed an article on food waste and the law and then Bokashi composting. This is a wonderful um um brochure should i go there or not let's just do it open link because this is my last slide let me just show you the last slide which is um land is not merely soil it is the fountain of energy flowing through a circuit of soils plants and animals and this was written in 1949 so it's wisdom that's flowing from and you guys know that so i don't need to I'm, i mean you guys know i don't need to press on that but either ways but that's the last slide but I want to show you this because if you want to you can look at my presentation but I found this very useful and some of my photographs are from here so see the, so you'll see all of this in great detail here as well and that's why I'm showing it to you so in case if you don't find what you're needing in my presentation you can go to the resource and find it as well with that, my presentation is done and I can answer questions. There are questions. So okay. um, you gave us those those links just now. Uh, are there blogs that you contribute to or other people? No, no, no. The blogs, I just read up so much before I do a presentation. So I... See, as master gardeners, we can't recommend anything sure. that's not like, you know, UC certified or educationally certified. So I cannot recommend any blogs per se on Bokashi. But um, yeah, you can look it up, but there's nothing new. You I don't mean, personally write a blog on this subject. I do not write a blog yeah. on this subject. Thank you. Um, could you send a printout to my email that I could put in the newsletter and link in things of the resources screen. Oh yeah. So yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I'll send you, I'll just send you uh yeah, I can do that. And right then I will be able to disseminate it or link it. Perfect. And that's sort of wonderful. Perfect. Yes. Okay, and so actually the last resource has everything that I've said pretty much. I haven't yeah. 
So you could, yeah, that would be easy thing to, yeah. Super, super, super. Can the lechete, how do you say that? You say lechete? I call it leche tea, leche. but it's leche. Like, you know, like when we do the warm okay. compost thing and you just yeah. pour water and you get the tea out there. Okay. Can yeah. it be used on the dreaded white fly? Yes. Please use it. It is so useful. Okay. Having said that, officially, because I work with school gardens as well, we do not recommend using leche. And this is, applies to even worm tea. And I say it for Bokashi as well, because there's not enough research done on it. You should not put it on edible plants because you don't know what what is growing in there, right? They don't, they don't recommend putting, or they in the sense, master gardeners don't recommend putting even compost tea on edibles because there is no research. There is no research because nobody's selling compost tea that we are buying. And so there is no funding for that. And there is a lot of research, but it's still not, verified and published and all of that so it's published but it's not verified so i've read a lot of it personally i put it and my plants thrive so but i would not ever do it in a school garden ever never because it's not something you want to do but personally it does not harm and uh with the leche uh, uh, ornamentals disease pest control absolutely use it Fruit trees, absolutely use it. Dormant trees, like, you know, if you have leaf, leaf curl, it's not going to help your peach leaf curl, but I use it on everything and it's really useful. I use all kinds of like, you know, the worm tea, I use it. It's so useful. But uh, the other way where I think if you're like, which you should be concerned about a little bit of the safety because we are putting meat and bone and everything in there and you really don't want to like put it on the thing and then not wash it properly and eat it what would be slightly more safer than spraying everywhere else you can spray but as far as fruits and vegetables is concerned the safety might be where if you put it in the soil rather than spraying it because you're putting it in the soil anyways you know sure. so that that you know there's like this one layer the soil is the protector of our of what we eat like you know it'll take care of everything so that i won't spray on edibles but i would put it in the soil the tea as well sure. like you know if your plant is not doing very well and it's you can't put bokashi right next to it or your bokashi is not ready but your cauliflower is coming up and you want it to really get that extra oomph to make it bloom really well like the broccoli cauliflower it's all like fruiting so you just take a quarter cup and take a gallon and if you put it by the soil you're perfectly fine because it's going to the soil, it's not going directly to the plant, you're safe because you're putting, yeah. So I would go that route, I would not spray it, but I would still use the leche in the soil. Okay. Um, just want you to know that you're getting high marks as a presenter. Um, <laughs> people are saying uh, such a good presenter. So just uh, thank you so much for that. But I have another question here. Uh, can we put kitchen scraps from the freezer directly in the bucket can you please bring it at room temperature and then put it in the bucket just because we don't see the microbes but they are live thingies and they don't like the cold so if you just put like it's like putting a chunk of ice on your body and you are much bigger than the little microbes so you know what happens is like you might kill it so yeah i would put it at least defrost it a little bit before you put it in, you know? It's okay. not wise to put it cold. Okay. Um, because then you're changing the temperature of the bucket, you know, the 60 degrees Fahrenheit thing. And that's, no, absolutely not. You can't put it. Sure. Uh, no, it's, it's, that makes total sense. Um, yeah, I was just thinking aloud. I know I wanted to say no, but I wanted to give good <laughs> reasons. <laughs> You can say no, we can take it. No, but I, I know, but I, I always like to explain where I'm coming from. That's and good. I just, and you yeah. have very well. Um, so you told us that we could pour it on uh, weeds to kill them while it was still potent. Yes. But, um, Without diluting it. So you take it out of the thing yeah. and within an hour, it doesn't have to be instantly, but within an hour not a couple days later when you're fertilizing it instead correct 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 so well, what about hour, don't dilute it so once you don't dilute it and you just pour it it will die right in front of your eyes next day morning it's yellow gone 
Oh, that'll be fun to watch it die. Um, but what about rhizomes and such as nut grass? I have not tried it, but it will work, but I haven't tried it. Okay. That works for me. Yeah. Um, uh, so I'm not sure. Um, I, I think I've gotten all the questions. Oh, I wanted to tell you that I, I want a brewer friend. How do I get a brewer friend? Oh, you don't need to know anything about it. They're just going to get rid of this stuff. And it's usually lying outside the brewery and in like huge containers, like, you know, the brand. So you don't need to know anybody. You just call the brewery and say, hello, I wanted some of your used brand. Like, you know, I just need like a couple pounds or whatever you want to need. And they'll say, come over, go in our backyard and take it or in our front yard. They're just laying there. So, yeah, I, I don't know where you live, but I live in Carmel Valley. So I go to the Delmar Viewpoint Brewery. And now I know the brewer and he's going to give me hops, like the actual hops cuttings, because he gets fresh hop cuttings sometimes. And I'm like, oh, give it to me and I'll grow stuff. So, yeah, then you become friends. But yeah, it, it, it it's a waste product for them. So I live in Vista and there are a bunch of breweries in my town. Oh, yeah, just call. It's like, you know, when we needed like eggshells and when we needed stuff for the compost bins, you know, or coffee. Remember, we needed coffee for the compost bins. Like, we didn't need to know the Starbucks person or the manager. We just go tell them, can we take your coffee? And they're like, yeah, please take it. We don't have to throw it in the trash. So, yeah. Um, about that brewer's um, stuff, uh, it, you just dry it and that's it? Or? No, 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 no. You do the exact same thing with the recipe. So let's go over that because that's a little, that's, let me talk about that a little bit. I'm glad you brought that up. So when you go and buy the stuff from the brewer, it's going to be extremely wet. So the water content that I told you, remember in the beginning for the recipe, please put less water because you're going to get so much water that you have to, it took me so, because I had like a hundred pounds of this and I didn't realize how much water I had to squeeze out because it comes really wet. So then I got tired of squeezing it and I actually went and bought the $12, like, you know, huge bag of bran from the horse place and um, added it to dry it up faster. So if you get it from the brewer, you're going to have a reverse problem where you're not going to need to add much water. You're going to need to remove the water and make it dry. So, yeah. Yeah. And if if you get tired of doing it, then you might want to just get more bran and <laughs> oh my gosh but uh, it's fun uh, oh, oh oh and the other thing since you guys might be interested in making it and it's fun it's not that bad I just think I made too much and I got tired but um when you dry it um there is because it's fermented remember I told you you be fermenting it for two weeks yeah. you mix you make that cake with molasses em1 water and bran, and then it doesn't stick in your hand. It's that consistency. Then you put it in a Ziploc bag or an airtight container for two weeks. You put a date on it and you at least for two weeks, you know, three weeks and no more. And then you take it out and you dry it. Now that is severely acidic smell. So it will smell. So my husband and I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't keep it in the house. It is no, no, for sure. So you have to keep it outside. So if you're planning to do it for this winter, you better start now because if it rains, then it doesn't dry. And the problem with outdoors that I faced is because I had so much, I had a huge tarp and on it. But then if the wind blew once it was dry, and when it was wet, it's not a problem. But once it became dry, it would start, like I, I wanted to have it. I didn't want it to fly away. But so... Those kind of things. But if it's in a smaller thing, like, you know, if you put it in like little trays or something like that, like flat, like oven trays or, you know, whatever, we have other flatter things. And then you can cover it if it's windy or if it's rainy, you can bring it in. In, I wouldn't recommend bringing it in. It does smell. It's extremely, acidic. I mean, not bad smell. It's just very acidic. It will burn your nose. Okay. So. Wow. But after it's dry, it doesn't smell that much. It's just when you first start, it's it's pretty highly acidic. So after, like, you know, if it, it'll be depending on the day. If it's sunny, like, you know, for five days, it'll dry in five days or seven days. But 
or maybe even faster depending on when you're doing it in summer it'll probably dry in two three days but yeah um, i don't i have a, hey everybody in the chat have i missed any questions if not then um this has been fantastic